We've talked about color management in DaVinci Resolve on this channel before and the advantages of using a scene referred solution in our workflows. In a nutshell, color management is a mathematically correct color space transformation, preserving the source to display image information with minimal loss. If you need a refresher, click on the link above or in the description. But color management has a lot of exciting stuff happening under the hood, so we thought about having a closer look at some of the key features and concepts we should be familiar with. And if you stick with us to the end, we'll have a bonus tip for you to save some time and improve efficiency in your next projects. There are two main scene referred color management methods in Resolve, which will give you identical image results. The first is taking place at the project level by setting the input and output color space transformations in the project settings. This is a great one-stop solution for a timeline containing the same source type or footage with embedded manufacturer metadata, which is automatically interpreted with the proper color space transformation. Clips without metadata like this one from a Sony A6500 will have to be set manually to the proper color space transform, which in this case is S-Log3. However, if you happen to work on a shoot where a variety of cameras were used, node level color management might make more sense simply because you can specifically create input color space transforms or if you wish input device transforms or IDTs for each source type group into a common wide gamut working space. Then from there you can apply an output color space transform known also as an output device transform or ODT to your target display monitoring and deliverables such as the REC 709 Gamma 2.4. This way, you have access to each input color space device parameter individually, like tone and gamut mapping, and you have the advantages of visually seeing the flow and adapting for a variety of input sources. Let's start from the top and make sure that we have the proper project settings in place for a scene referred color management at the node level. Head over to the color management section and start by selecting the DaVinci YRGB color science. This effectively tells Resolve to ignore any sort of color management, since we'll be doing this manually ourselves instead. Next, from the timeline color space, select DaVinci White Gamut Intermediate. This will be our working color space designed by Blackmagic to contain a broad gamut of colors captured by the most recent professional cameras, as well as a wide dynamic tonal range. We want to be working in the widest possible color space to future-proof our grade for a wide variety of target outputs from Rec. 709 to theatrical P3, D65 or HDR trim passes. The timeline color space will also affect how certain color space aware tools will react, such as the HDR color wheels or the color warper. This will change the sensitivity of the controls depending on the state of the image at that point in the pipeline. In our case, DaVinci Wide Gamut. We can confirm that by checking the color space and gamma of the HDR color wheels, which now are referring to the timeline color space which we set to DaVinci White Gamut Intermediate. For instance, the global adjustment in the HDR wheels will react more as an aperture control on your camera and the values will be measured by stops. The same behavior will happen with the temp and tint adjustments which is similar to setting the Kelvin values in the camera white balance. I'll leave the output color space on same as timeline, which we have set to DaVinci White Gamut Intermediate, since we'll be adding our own output device transform to Rec. 709 Gamma 2.4, suitable for my display and deliverables. Before moving on, there's one more setup I'd like to mention here in the project settings, in case you are working with Blackmagic RAW sources. In the Camera RAW tab, you can specify the decoder to interpret the footage directly into a DaVinci Wide Gamut Intermediate Color Space and Gamma, which is the working space we've defined earlier. Well, this effectively will save you from setting up an input color space transform for the B-RAW sources and make your node tree less cluttered. The next move will be to organize our camera sources into their own groups. For instance, I will group my R Eclipse into their own group by selecting them and choosing Add into a new group from the thumbnail contextual menu. I'll do the same with my Sony S-Log3 clips. I'll group the Pocket 4K B-RAW clips even if these don't need an input color space transform anymore since we specified that in the camera RAW settings earlier. So now I will have two additional node structure pages for each group one preceding the group and one following where I can create adjustments that will affect all the clips in the group. Next, we'll be creating an input color space for each group we've created depending on the source type. This will transform the input color space of the specific source to our DaVinci Wide Gamut Intermediate working space. 
We'll be doing this at the very front of each group. So let's select the group preclip tab and drag a color space transform OFX from the effects panel onto the node. Select your proper input color space and gamma, which in my case is Sony S Gamma 3 Cine and Sony S Log 3, which is the profile I filmed with in camera. Then select DaVinci White Gamut and DaVinci Intermediate for the output color space and gamma respectively. Set the tone and gamut mapping to none so we have no restrictions for the source data, then uncheck Apply Forward and Inverse OOTF as well as the Use White Point Adaptation checkboxes. Repeat the same procedure for the other source groups, only making sure to apply the proper individual source input color space transforms and gamma. The last step in setting up our scene referred color manage workflow is to add the output device transform on the timeline level that will take the DaVinci white gamut color space into the display color space we're working on, typically a Rec 709 gamma 2.4 monitor, same as the target deliverables. The luxury of this method is that in case we are asked for different output targets such as a theatrical P3 D65 or HDR trim passes, all we need to do is to select the proper output color space and gamma without needing to regrade. Ideally, we should also grade on the correct reference monitor for each specific output target deliverables since the image will look completely different on a monitor that doesn't match the same color space even if technically the output should be correct. In other words, don't grade an HDR trim pass on an SDR reference monitor. A typical output color space meant for web deliverables like those for Stocks United uploads should have the following parameters. DaVinci White Gamut Intermediate for input color space and gamma and Rec 709 Gamma 2.4 as output color space and gamma. Select luminance mapping and use the maximum input nits value of 10,000 to have no luminance restrictions. Set the maximum output nits to 100 suitable for your Rec 709 monitor. Select saturation compression from the gamut mapping method with the default values and select apply forward OOTF and use white point adaptation if not selected already. You are now set to do your grading in between these IDT and ODT bookend color space transformations in the clip tab of each individual clip. Remember also that once you have a decent grade, you can copy that to other clips on your timeline using the middle mouse click and do minor adjustments as needed. And as promised, here is a bonus tip that will save you a ton of time when starting on new projects. So obviously you don't want to waste time setting up the input and output color space transforms for each project. So here's a tip on how to save these for future uses. On your timeline, add a basic title from the titles effect menu, title it accordingly, reflecting the input and output color space transform, then save it as a new compound clip so it appears as a clip on the color page. Give it a proper name and then head over to the color page and add it to the existing group you want to save the settings for. Select the group preclip page to reveal the input color space transform node, then create a power grade album. Anything that you will save here will be carried over to all the other projects in that database. Name it accordingly, then grab a still and give it a proper name under the still label, which helpfully has pre appended in front of the name. The thumbnail will show the type of input color space transform you have saved there, so next time just apply that still grade to a group preclip node. And since we're here, let's create a still containing the output color space settings from the timeline level so we have this ready for our next project. This scene referred color management is guaranteed to give you a faithful representation of the image that was captured by the camera sensor and displayed on your reference monitor with little or no data loss. And that's mainly because of the math happening in the color transformation algorithms on the resolves hood, which makes sure that no pixels will be harmed in the process. I'm sure you have questions and if you do, please leave them in a comment below since we'll read and reply to each one of them. And while you're at it, why not leave a thumbs up if you like this video, subscribe and hit that bell so you'll be notified of each video we're posting on this channel. My name is Gavi Bukataru for Stocks United and I'll see you in the next video.